This is part 23 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we will discuss select list validation in Angular. Let's understand this with an example. Here is what we want to do. We want to make this department field a required field. If we don't have any department selected, then we want to display this required validation error message. As soon as we select a department, the validation error message should disappear. Notice we have our department select list right here. Validating a select list in Angular is very similar to how we validate text boxes, radio buttons and check boxes. We already discussed how to validate these three types of controls in our previous videos in this series. Now to validate this department select list, we follow exact same steps. So let's quickly make this department field a required field. First, we make the select list required by including the required attribute. Next, let's create a template reference variable. Notice we have named our template reference variable department. We are then going to use this template reference variable department in the class binding. Notice this bootstrap class has error is used for styling the validation error messages. Next, we want to style this label text department. For that, we are going to use another bootstrap class and that is this control label class. Finally, let's include a span element that displays the required validation error message. Notice these steps are very similar to how we validate the other types of controls like text boxes, radio buttons and check boxes. Let's save our changes and then take a look at the browser. Notice now if we touch the department drop down list and if we don't select any option, we get the required validation error message. As soon as we select a department, the validation error message disappears. So at this point, our select list required validation is working as expected. Now let's take this to the next level. In most of the real world applications, in addition to the list of departments that we already have, we typically have another option and that option is usually the first option and that's going to act as the prompt for the user. Something along the lines of select a department, please select, etc. So let's add select department as the first option to our select list. Now notice this piece of code right here. We are using the ng for structural directive to loop over the list of departments that we have in the departments array and then add one option for each department. And this departments array is coming from our component class. So let's quickly take a look at the component class. Notice that departments array is right here and we have our five departments and we see those five departments right here. In addition to those five departments, we also want select department as the first option. Let's close this explorer window and then within our view template, just about this option loop, I'm going to include another option and that is our select department option. Notice I have set the value of this option to minus one. So we are going to use this value to validate if the user has selected a valid department. Let's save our changes and then take a quick look at the browser. Notice the department select list. We want our first option select department to be selected by default when the form initially loads. So let's fix that. Notice our select department option. Its value is minus one and we are binding this select element to the department property of the employee object. So if we take a look at our model within the component class, here is our employee object and the department property at the moment is null. That's the reason we don't have any option selected within the select list but we want our option select department which is the first option to be selected by default. So I'm going to set this property to its option value which is minus one. Notice now we have our first option select department selected by default but we have another problem. We have just broken the required validation. It's not working anymore. Now, if I touch the drop down list and leave it without selecting a valid department, I expect to see required validation error because the select department is not a valid department selection. We know that, but Angular validation system does not know it because if you look at the department property value within the model, notice its value is minus one and not null anymore. So Angular is treating that as a valid department ID but we know it's not a valid department. So if the user selects this option, then we want to show that required validation error. We'll discuss how to fix that by creating a custom validator in our next video.
Here is the code that we used in the demo. Thank you for listening and have a great day.